Sorry, let me uncheck the switch. No, no, no. Please get it. No, I usually give um, 10 minutes of transport. Last time I landed in the Sorry, colleagues. Okay. Welcome. Good morning, colleagues. Hello. Yes. Um, I'm quite excited, and I see that my face is half now. Half minute. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, now a full moment. Okay. Um, yeah, no, this is really uh, great. We have uh, the other foundation with us. I'll let them introduce the whole team uh, today. But, uh, you know, uh, this gender, and uh, I know that you do more than transport, but, you know, we started with the gender and transport, and we had a meeting with Dipshita and Saka, and she introduced us so. But we like to learn really about uh, you know gender issues in India and I think you know that can be useful. I think um, our uh, I don't know how well you know SCAP, but it's a regional yeah. institution, right? Uh, we have a headquarters in Bangkok and um, it's economic social development issues. So SDGs that's the same as um, uh, OBI. Um, we cover the Asia Pacific region, and this office covers a subset of it of South and Southeast Asia, um, which includes India, familiar with the countries of South Asia, I'm sure, but it has uh, we also have Iran and Turkey. So, um, and our colleagues, including myself, we're relatively new, right? I mean, one, one to two years, and then we have a fantastic team of uh, interns as well, that, you know. And rotates every three to six months. It keeps our age young, you know. Um, so, so in that sense, you know, um, you know, the depth of the understanding of issues of India and so gender issues in that it's relatively, you know, kind of limited to activity that you may be involved in. So, I think this is a fantastic opportunity to learn more in depth and also, you know, in that. Largely interact with government, so you know, civil society. Uh, I mean, we have some interaction when we have workshops at Starbucks, but direct, you know, work is relatively limited too. So, um, you know, how how you right? Uh, what role you play as an NGO? And um, yeah, I'm sure there are millions of NGOs in uh, India, so you know, don't really. Uh, generalize it, but nonetheless, I think your experience will be really, you know, useful for us to understand better the dynamics there and also how you work with government, what you expect of government, uh, what issues you have with government, it's largely out of, you know, the, the uh, interaction is largely with government. Anyway, there's a lot to learn. Um, so I really look forward to this morning's uh, exchange. And, uh, maybe I start by introducing our side and then, yeah, so keep us on any business or part of this uh, sort of general audience. I'm studying to end this with the best of the film. I made a follow up over on my blog. I'm going to do the process and basis. Yeah, a little louder, and also we'll go back afterwards. But tell where you're from, to the country or region. And this, I'm doing my internship here. Basically, I'm a master's student, currently pursuing master's in the ASS. Where are you from? Jen. 
and we'll share the clips. My name is Matua, I'm also an intern here, and I'm originally from Delhi. And I just completed my master's in international relations in Japan. Okay, so much of the mountain right now. I'm here, Gabriel. I am from France. I am pursuing my Amazon intern. I am pursuing my Master in Development Studies from the French University, and I am finishing now with my internship. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Hi, everyone. My name is Sherry. I'm pursuing my Master's in Economics and I'm from Delhi. And I'm pursuing my Master's in Global Institute. Excuse me, I also love you. I'm from Bangalore. I'm from the working for you and from last 30 years. I'm assisting in the UK. From Bangalore. I can't say it was really. I can't say it was really. I'm from Germany. And, uh, my name is Kavita and uh, I'm from Delhi. I am pursuing my master's in social work. I'm currently working as a front office ICQ. Uh, Delhi, I Excuse me. Uh, Uh, yes, good morning. Hello, my name is Takashi. I'm an economic affairs officer with the sub regional office for South and Southwest Asia. Uh, I'm right now based in Bangkok, so therefore joining uh, with you online. Okay, anybody else online? That's it. Huh? Rajan's not here. <laughs> okay. Pass on to you. Shikha, really much. Hi everyone, my name is Shikha. I am from Uttarakhand and my family is in Gurgaon with my family and I'm working as a communications manager in Hatha. Hello there, I'm from Dr. Sunil Mishra. I'm an associate professor at the uh, UTP College. I'm doing uh, research on uh, social business in the child education over the university. I want to talk about the nature of the most with ISD. Basically, work on gender issues and gender dimensions. They don't want to trust me. Okay, so it's gone south. So you're working with the other ones? Yes, okay. I'm Doro, uh, originally from Kolkata, the eastern part of the country. But yeah, I, I often come to Delhi almost every month and I roam around. On India for my work. Uh, currently, I am chief functionary of Azad Foundation. I have been in, in this sector and working with the gender issues, in particular women's uh, social and economic empowerment for the last 30 years to write articles and work. And I'm part of the women's movement of India very actively here on the planet. So, um, I think that we have a presentation. Yeah, yeah, that will start. With that. So, before presentation, we'd yeah. like to show a uh, small video. Sure, film. So, we, which we shared yesterday with Stephanie. Mm -hmm. So, we'd like to start with that. But before that, just in a lighter note, we took a drive, our driver, Saka driver, and uh, we gave her the location. And suddenly she said, Miko Ma'am's yeah. office. Yes. 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 I said, oh, we don't need anything. We go regularly. Yes. 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 I know her. Yes. 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 Yeah. So he was so famous in Azad and Saka community. Yes. Yes. The first month of your Yes. 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 Yeah. <laughs> 
Okay. I think that's a this bridge says everything. If you need any presentation, however, we have a formal presentation and then just do go through that quickly. And um, I'd also pay for the interaction. So we well, will not take much time on the presentation so that we can give some more time to interact. So now next slide, please. So this is uh, precisely our vision and mission. So we envision a world where all women, in particular women from underprivileged context, enjoy full citizenship, exercise their control over lives and bodies, earn a livelihood in dignity, and generate wealth and value for all. Uh, our mission is to enable women disadvantaged by various um, uh, identity dynamic, identity uh, structures. Like gender, caste, class, ethnicity, religion, etc., uh, sexuality, uh, so that they are able to empower. So we don't say that we empower them. Here is a slightly difference than when we say that we empower them, we so don't think that we have that capacity or power to empower others. People will have to take their uh, responsibility to empower themselves, but what we do that we enable them with skill and knowledge. Uh, so that they can empower themselves and build a gender as a society. Next slide, please. And they join in a market which has been traditionally close to them. Yeah. So now we are present in eight cities in India, in four cities with the uh, um, with directly, and in four cities with partners. So there are direct. Uh, in the left side, you see there are a couple of uh, numbers in terms of the impact. So, uh, till our mid, so as I started in 20, uh, 2008 in Delhi and then expanded in so many cities. Until date, it will be, I think, now 4,000. It is again two months, two, three months back data. So, 4,000 women have been trained, and uh, under that, uh, I mean, around 2,500 2, women are in working as either chauffeur or writers in any of the cities of India. Um, all of them together have provided 1.5 million safe rides and earned 2.4 million USD community earnings. Uh, we have started this um, riding program with the two wheelers uh, training with the women after COVID when the four wheelers drivers market were almost closed people stopped going out, people were not hiring cab, people are not employing private chauffeurs because their income has also gone down. So from that perspective, then the, uh, the e-commerce were opening. Though we have uh, many, uh, 
we, we are aware that there are many limitations of e-commerce in terms of their gender lens. However, that has been come to underprivileged women as an opportunity. So then we started quickly training uh, two wheeler to them. And of course, at the same time, we introduced the e-vehicles, four wheeler and two wheeler. So to in terms of the sustainability, to ensure the sustainability of one planet. So, and right now around 300 women are guiders and working in Investgate, Flipkart, Amazon, all these companies, Swiggy. But I, I'm again uh, repeating that we are in, uh, always in, uh, in this negotiation with these companies. So this is women get safe space there, women get toilets there because they were a uh, 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 sector they were not open to women before. So they are not aware about that what kind of uh, gender just ecosystem needs to be in the companies to ensure women's safety, security, and rights. So like toilets, like the sexual harassment workplace policy they have or not. So we all check before sending them. And this negotiation, uh, negotiation is continued. I mean, it's going on. Uh, 100% women driver have become chief women with earners in their families. Um, their, and their family income has increased from 100 to 200%. 70% of the trainees are actually right now it's 83% in our pool. Within the drivers, 83% are survivors of gender violence. And we see our program as a preventive program to gender violence. This is a tool to combat and prevent for the violence. So we see there is a clear connection between um, combating or decreasing violence or stopping violence and this learning opportunity. Next slide, please. The context where, I, where we work, there are a couple of data we have given. We all know that early marriage is huge in India. Uh, as I said, violence against women. Uh, these are the some national data we have provided. Violence against women and which has also increased during COVID, uh, particularly domestic violence. And the National Commission of Women uh, says that it has been increased around uh, five, three to five percent. Years and not uh, declining labor force participation. This is a one area of huge, huge concern in India now. So, this is data till 2020. In 2021, the number has little increased, the percentage of women in labor force participation has little increased. However, that also in the unorganized sector. So, women are 90% joining in unorganized sector which can't provide the social security and the other justice to women. Uh, unfit care work has been a huge uh, adverse challenge to the women and we have uh, provided some data. So we see in India 243 minutes daily women uh, spend on the average uh, unfit care work whereas men, men spend only 25 minutes. That's a national data, government data. 92% of women are engaged in unfit care work compared to women. And whenever this issue comes that women need to go out for driving or riding for eight hours a day, then is the main challenge. One of the main challenges come that we will take care of the uh, household chores and care work in family. So we have an intervention on that we come to pay. And gender which we all know that we never list it. Next slide, please. So, strategy. So, there's a type that you see called Gender Just Skill Education, the framework. It has been co created with some partners by Azad. The, the main thing is that we see just women's uh, language generation, or as, I might, as my colleague Shini has also said in the film, that women's language generation or economic empowerment is not possible if we don't address their context. And economic and social empowerment equally, it should go in equal space and equally important. We really want to change women's lives or bring changes or change the patriarchal dynamics in women's lives. So uh, we don't believe in Azad that only economic empowerment can change anything unless we address the social component of social empowerment as well. So we is in the first we let us engage with the communities of marginalized communities. What we do that first we go to the communities 
Basically, I mean, we mainly work with urban slums in urban poor communities. And we, 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 our, our work at every step, we use the intersectional lens. Even within the urban poor, we try to uh, reach to the uh, most vulnerable in terms of the power um, structure or identities. So in our, right now in our pool, we have 60% women from the, here it is not written, 60% women from the marginalized caste community. So SCST is, we have more than 20% from the minority religion community. We are also looking for the, I mean, we are trying to reach, and a couple of us are there, but percentage is not that much yet, to reach the uh, community work gender, uh, uh, with the gender, different gender activities and sexual activities. So we have a couple of women in the system, but not so much. Anyway, so engage with marginalized communities is our first strategy. So we reach community, we talk to them, we have many activities, many uh, programs to have awareness programs, to reach them, to social economic survey, uh, uh, campaigns and all. Then from there, we encourage women to join WWW, Women Teach Wills Programs. That is just not a driving school training. It's a trans, we, we call it transformative capacity building training. So we don't provide technical training to them. Along with the technical driving training, we provide, we have a six to eight months for four wheelers and for two wheelers, four months, uh, designed modules where we provide that apart from the technical training, we provide gender, patriarchy, violence against women, laws relevant for women to combat violence against women, like domestic violence law, like rape law, like sexual harassment law. law. Um, we, we train them with um, sexuality, sexual rights, and uh, reproductive health and reproductive rights. We train them, we have all models, we train them in the parts of life skills, because these are the women who have been uh, traditionally and gener through generations told that this is the out, the, the, the world outside home is not yours. So when they go out, they need to learn also that what a professional world should be and what, what would be the behavior. So we train them in communication, we train them in spoken English, because sometimes like like we go, we have the, I mean, we are very fortunate to have drive like her. So, but our drivers need to know at least basic communication in English. So spoken English. Um, and then we train them on uh, self-defense. We, we train them in when they do. Um, communication, as I said, and finally we train them at first stage, because if something happens in the car, at least the basic first stage, they should have the training. And finally we train them before they are out for job, that we call it work readiness. So basically when you go to job, what should be your, your rights should be preserved, but also it should be a good professional. So that balance we train them. So with that, And the, our fourth is basically then uh, that you see the, the diamond, the, the, the newer one is that then after transformative capacity building, they are being in strategic partners for consulting meetings in the market because that's also a job to engage with the market. Market has its bias. Market has its bias on gender. First questions we said that, I mean, we used to hear nowadays now people have started accepting women drivers, but we used to hear that women will be able to do it. And then it comes women from which caste, women from which, uh, which religion. Then it comes, uh, this woman is very fragile, looks very um, uh, thin, this kind of, as if thin men don't drive car. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> so, so yeah, so this kind of so engaging with the market has been a job and then our partners are to us to, uh, to conscious uh, market also. And then that's another thing, the women when they join in uh, training, they start facing the uh, uh, I mean, challenges from families, communities, violence sometimes increases, sometimes uh, mobility restriction has been a huge issue, issue and all. Uh, so, but after they join work, so that may, brings a lot of change in their lives. 
you, you could go at the morning in, in, in the for the riders. They we first get asked them to go to reach hub at 7 a.m. and maybe walk till 12. But the total family structure and household shows. So that time, at least after joining the work for six months to one year, we need to hold the drive. We need to engage with family. We need to make family take it on the board that it's a, actually it's a good thing. So that kind of the sustaining in the market in terms of transport uh, that is agriculture. When we say that in the first point, uh, so next slide please. Yeah, I think it's like <laughs> Yeah. So engage, when we say engage, we have, as I said, we have some certain activities, but we realized, we started this program in 2018, and we realized that it is not possible for women, it is very, very difficult for women to fight with family, to fight with community, even when they go out, fight with the male drivers. It's very, very difficult life for them. So it started thinking, what could we do? And then it came up that in 2014, we started actually three vertical of community engagement programs. One is with the young women of the same community from where drivers are coming. And we started, we call it the Parvas Feminist Leadership Program. So we provide one year fellowship to them. We train them how to be feminist leaders, actually to create conducive situation for women who want to go out or whoever, even if they want to be inside in the community, but they should have their uh, support system. So, and under this, what these feminist leaders do? First, one of the challenge we went to join this kind of driving program has been we experience a little bit of citizenship documents. So, first work they started to ensure these women from their communities they join in um, they join in driving program or not for all. They should have the citizenship documents, and then we are going to very good schemes from the governments of all state and central, but they don't have access to the schemes, uh, schemes that are under women because they don't know. First, they don't know about scheme. Second, they don't know where to go. They don't know what to fill up. So these feminist leaders help them to access social security benefits. These feminist leaders also support them whenever any violence happens or to prevent violence, uh, particularly domestic violence. And another important area of this uh, feminist leaders do is leading the community, building the infrastructure which will, which will help women um, to live a dignified life. Like many times, we saw there are no toilets. Even the toilets is there, there are no doors of the toilets. Or maybe the tap water is so far from home. So this woman will go and it, it takes time. So these uh, we also they do with the local governments so that women have their at least toilets, light or road, safety, tap water, um, this kind of infrastructure. And finally, they they encourage women and they end up, I mean they enable women to join WWW program, not traditional like it. Uh, we do have another vertical with the adolescent girls. For them, what we do, they are not actually, uh, they don't bring change in the community directly in that way, but they are, uh, we are, we are engaging with them with the philosophy that catch them here. So we train them, we provide them opportunities, we train them, then again, we have an Azad Kishori program where we do have the same kind of modules and we are a very structured in that way. <laughs> so modules and all, where we, train them first to, we encourage them to join in non-traditional education, in STEM, in, and in future non-traditional professions, negotiate marriage with family, because that has been a huge issue with child and early marriage, women or girls have got married, so negotiating with marriage, having evidence about menstruation and all, so this kind of, so that they are trained from young to become a non-traditional professionals or joining STEAM or whatever. Many of them are actually now doing engineering in ITIs, doing technical work in medical and all those things. And the third and very important program, we feel is very important program, does we find that we do everything with women. 
But men and women are changing, but men are men are not changing. So better why don't we start? I'm sorry with this. I am sure that here we have in this we have all changed with men, but we are, but uh, but uh, generally I'm talking about so men also need to and and our answer is not men's fault. They have brought their socialized and it's like that. So they started working on the toxic masculinity with them, and they become the ally of these feminist leaders or the drivers to uh, stop violence, to stop restriction in mobility, and finally and most importantly, sharing household chores at home. So now our main leaders, uh, we get every uh, regularly that inline baseline, inline baseline, inline, and all those. We see that seventy percent of uh, young men are now doing household chores, and they are influencing other others in the community to do the same. So that kind of data we have. So these are our uh, first time on engaging with the community. Second place. The next slide, please. So these I have already spoken, this visually and all, you can skip this. So this you see the men are doing cooking mm -hmm. and feminist leaders are, uh, so one of the, one of our feminist leaders have started, one group of feminist leaders started a community crash after uh, COVID so that women can go out and do job. Uh, Kishori leaders are being trained in not rushing. Next slide, please. Our training, as I said, I have already spoken about this technical training, empowerment training, and professionalism. The three in our training. I spoke about Zedun. So exactly what they are doing, they are challenging norms. And how they are challenging norms. They are having first the regulatory guidelines, decent job they are having. They are the principal breadwinners. That, that gives them immense decision making power. They invest in the health, education, property creation, and most importantly, they invest in their siblings or children's health education, which brings a long standing change in the community, not only their lives, but in the generation. And they lead violence free lives. And they provide safe rights to other women. And this transformative capacity building in non traditional life, look, there's no driving or writing, they join from it. There is a small boat from a driver, you can do it. Next slide. So there are again, Quotes from the drivers. I, I am just not repeating. I'm just repeating it. So, redefinition, recognition, investment. Should it go ahead? Next slide. Insert this one. Videos. This is with you. This PPT. Uh, you can see it later so that you can talk. I think this is the last one. Door is open. Very oh, nice. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, very good. But it shows actually how. how Transformative this experience is for the driver on how to have to look at so many different parts of the experience. Okay, so yesterday, since you didn't have a chance to ask questions, you have all the floor. <laughs> <laughs> ask questions. You can come here and suggest a detailed conversation. Just one thing I, I would like to add, we yeah. don't have this slide, so oh. you this date. So we have a huge work on the Engaging the policymakers. Mm -hmm. So, we are an organization where we mostly have to take our consultative uh, status. We are part of CSOs for the last four or five years, CSWs. Um, yeah. So, we, we have been joining Swift and participating in uh, organizing sessions. We have been joining HLPF for the last two years. Actually, even as that last March on, uh, in Bangkok, floating, I was there. Oh, no. Yeah. So, so that kind of engagement we do have at the global and national forums, and a huge uh, 
advocacy work has done by Azad in Delhi. Uh, we started in 2016 and it has been done in 2020. Uh, when we wanted women bus drivers to join the DTC, DTC Transport Corporation. And we did this huge advocacy. And we have the advocacy brief and all, and then engaging with minister and the department and all. Finally, we have, uh, you all know, I guess that they have, some of you know that they have changed their norms to be women in terms of, and it was our demand, the height should be reduced. I mean, they have this height criteria, which is, it doesn't make any sense. And then they had this uh, huge money needed to take any later training. training. We demanded waiving the fee, and we are very grateful to them. They have done this. And uh, third, they, they want the, there, is a, there has been an experience criteria. So we told them how women will be included in as bus driver because they haven't done it earlier. So better you provide a solid training so that accidents don't happen, but they join with minimum experience or experience of driving for them. So and now uh, I think around 50 women are in DTC training. Out of 50, I think 30 to 40, 35 women are from Azad. So that has been a huge advocacy has been done with the government and only we take the credit with the women, of course. And we have seeded our entire network, all in genesis. But 34 organizations and individuals are part of that. Uh, and we have been working together for uh, 2017. We have uh, made with many advocacy works in our state level and with the government. Uh, one important, uh, we, we organized an international conference in 2018, Indian Network, where around uh, world 20 countries joined, along with the practitioners of another other Indian officials, not only tribes, but the plumbers, but the uh, nations and all women from Africa, from Europe, from any other countries, and uh, policymakers and academics. So that has been a huge uh, agenda and work with us. So, and importantly, and we're very happy that these days, after doing so many years, this talking to governments with various levels, with all these global forums joining and with this engagement with even agencies, we have been able to at least make this non traditional livelihood little mainstream because government of India also, actually, in last October in the World Child Day, government of India asked our women to participate and talk, where our Kishori and writer joined and talked, and our staff were also there and all. After that, and as a thankful to the government, they have launched a program under Beti Bane Beti, uh, under the Beti Bachao, Beti Parao. There has been program Beti Bane Kushal, and they are introducing non traditional livelihood skill education within that. And national education policy has also included a non traditional livelihood under vocational training, professional education, that also has been done at Vocational by the Azad and Partners. Thank you. Wow, pretty important work. Let me just introduce our two drivers, actually, oh. who are on the road longer than any one of us. <laughs> so, if you guys can introduce yourselves. Yeah, myself is there. Talking again for last year. And then we said, driver working in Delhi more than a decade. And they ran out of license. But it's more welcome, yeah, that the woman said, there's a competition for us. It's okay, anyway. So, what small question I want to ask that? That, uh, you know, the, of course, the locally, you could really, which can be supplied and you can take a time. Can tell it too. If they go for the auto station, how can they can manage? That's the little bit my question. Auto station? The auto station. If you're going for the support of the water, we must be You should have called um, a driver as a facilitator of this session. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she would reply better. Why did you call her? Yeah. But no. what is that? <laughs> no, I mean, there could now, be some yeah, so problems in the highways. Now I'm putting the. Uh, so basically, we are really, I mean, like all of us, as I mean, you have, you have raised a very important question. We were very, uh, I mean, we are very 
we were very in hesitation that should be said we went for outer station and so once we okay. went out what outer station was saying that yeah in the south of delhi oh right or oh, outer kolkata or outer jaipur or outer yeah, city, like that. right yeah. Yeah. so but they, they themselves came in delhi first said why why don't you send us to delhi to akra district we were to manage and said, why not? And then, then they said that we do, and we will also, and for, I mean, in the beginning, we were just in the 10 to 6 or 8 maximum, they will be on road 8, 9. But they started this, why don't we do the all, whole night airport duty? And they started themselves, they said, okay, if you are okay, then you start. So they manage it very well, I must say, when they go to the out of the city and the long distance and all in every city. Jaipur, in Kolkata, in Delhi, Chennai, we have started very recently, in Ahmedabad, everywhere. You know, they go outside very well and they manage. And then actually they are trained in a way that they, they, have, they, they know the self defense. In their car, they have this button, the push button if anything happens. And the, the main thing of our training program is make them confident. Yeah. So as a I mean, there is nothing like that that women will not be able to do. So even women go out. Men are also men can also have some danger. So so, so as women, so we make them that confident that they feel that if men can handle that any situation, any situation or any any danger on road, why don't we? So it's about uh, my capabilities. So what we build throughout six and eight months, but more interesting, more importantly, we build the confidence. And they came up, sir, to us with this thing that why you why are you sending us to Avra, the little Avra trip? First, that's how it emerged. And in Kolkata, I remember they came that why don't we send us to Kolkata to Shanti So that's how the things okay. they managed very slow, but it's better they Thanks for that question. Okay. Nankishwari, you want to introduce yourself? Sorry, sorry, before we... What's the name, sir? Nankishwari. Nankishwari. Okay, so open the door. I have a question to ask Jaya based on that exchange. So, but what, why do you think that women cannot go out station? No, no, because they have a class of couple on the highways, maybe. They suppose she is going to allow, she is going to allow. So the passengers, if it's the woman, that's also maybe there is a man will be the passenger. Sometimes, if some happen to be there, maybe not, maybe yes. That's what I said. They have safety button. No. Safety matter. That's why the question is the safety matter. They have that spray. But most importantly, we don't, even that sucker's responsibility, we don't randomly send to check with any driver at any plant, be it men and women. Just we have some policies. So that their safety is also ensured. When we place them in any private uh, uh, homes or offices, we check that there is the situation policy, there is the other uh, washrooms facility, and all those things. So that kind of uh, yeah, due to also we do. But women are now confident enough. They are the friends of police. Police talks surround them. Huh? That kind of relationship mm -hmm. that now on the road. Um, and then and they, they, we teach them self defense. So there has been a five days course of well leading. So they and then pull the 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 police train them self defense. Right. right. And in other cities also the experts train them the self defense. So they know how to handle situations. Yes. Yes, please. First, I'm going to say that I'm really admiring your work. It is very admiring to see what you are doing. Uh, I have a question, uh, multiple questions, but uh, one in general. Outside of the empowerment mission of Azad, uh, the driving part, uh, did you, uh, can you tell me if, if you notice the differences between your initiative and uh, your initiative and some other initiative that I think didn't really work, like the big picture initiative? I think there was one in Fox. Uh, is, uh, did you notice the, the key differences between your initiative, which is working, with also initiative, like the big, big initiative, that I think was tried in multiple cities, but didn't work out at the end? 
or decrease in the third year report usage. Uh, did you, did you, do you know what kind of initiative you are talking about? Uh, same kind of initiative. Similar, similar, yeah, similar. Yeah, similar. Yeah, especially because from what I, uh, I read, it was mm, a lot of Indian cities and what initiatives like the big rickshaw, but there was a lack of users, especially, and drivers were women driving. The, the not all of your initiative is working compared to the other ones. If I'm big, yeah, I'm not sure. No, well, uh, yeah, I understand that from where you are coming, but well, uh, I mean, we can say that why our our program has been successful, but mm -hmm. why others' program is not successful? I mean, talking out from outside, it, it it it's not authentic because you don't know enough from from about their program. Every program has their context, mm -hmm. but as I said in the presentation, our program is focused. So many times, what we see in this kind of library building program. Uh, we, we, uh, if we focus on only technical thing, mm. that doesn't help actually. So the main key of the thing you make, you have to make that confidence, that confidence, that sense of that, I, I can, I can, and we can. So that is something you need to build. Uh, and also, as I've said, that as our program is multifaceted. So not only we concentrate on the woman particularly, but also her family, community, state, public places, transport department. So this all encompassing thing is required. So maybe that was not there in those programs. Yes, we are in Yeah. There are four internationals. Uh, her name is Naina. She is from Balisar. It's a slum in Delhi. And she drives Sakha cabs. How long did that do Sakha cabs? How long did that do Sakha she says that she, she joined as a sucker driver the last eight months. Uh, and uh, before that, she was a trainee in the Azad. And she completed all her training in four months. All this technical and empowerment and more training. <laughs> Any other questions? I actually have one question, a little bit a different one of the part. You mentioned that you are expanding the work into other communities as well. When you mentioned the different gender identities, are you talking about different community here or different ways of like looking at that gender identity? That you can have some measures of like looking at, I don't know, other communities that um, find their gender is not necessarily. Always the same time. No, when you say other gender communities, we wanted to mean that this not only sees women. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Gender and sexual identities are other, other okay. than maybe trans, non binary, oh. yes, I mean, LGBTQA, I, oh. all those things. Well, I have a simple question, but they already asked, but um, I would like to ask if. Do you have any plans of starting a program? Because in this office, we work a lot about on climate and sustainability. So, are there any plans on how you could um, incorporate that into the vision and transport sector? Uh, for example, using electric vehicles for the building, um, but for this, we're going to make a similar for this program for instead of transport, incorporating sustainability. Yeah, EVK, as I said, we have already introduced. So our two wheeler program is totally on the e scooters. In four wheeler, also, we have introduced in training uh, e vehicles in Jaipur, in Delhi, not yet in Kolkata, because e vehicles are also expensive. We don't have budget to buy in all locations. If anybody uh, gives us, we are open yeah. to accept and start that. 
However, in Kolkata, it's very interesting. In last environment day, uh, how many just shoppers, six shoppers join in the East e-vehicle, first e-vehicle service in Kolkata? The six women join and many more will be joining soon. That's like Ola Uber, there has been a cab company launched called Snap, Snap Cabs, who are driving only e-vehicles. I think all over India, but in Kolkata, it started. Um, and uh, yeah, all our scooty two wheelers drivers are ninety percent of them are e vehicles because we are also, as I, as I said, ours is we call this SDG four, SDG five, SDG um, uh, eleven, SDG nine. I mean, so environment has been at seventeen, so and this is job SDG eight. So so many SDGs we are. Uh, Try to intervene and incorporate in our work. So environment has been a huge issue and we have introduced that. But of course, there has been challenges, I must say. First, the women don't have the charging stations because in their homes, the charging stations and their home, the electricity is constant. And uh, so, so they don't get the charging stations as many cities. In Delhi, it is now uh, frequent, but I'm talking about R6. We work in other seven cities. So one is that, and this for the mainly for the two wheelers. Number uh, two is that that uh, even for two wheelers, there there is no investment. So no bank is there to provide loan for five two wheelers as they provide loan to five wheelers. So if women want to now to Azad and Sakha are supporting them, but Azad and Sakha has also limitation on any other organization, even government. How much they can give just use. So there should be the loan from bankers. We are advocating on that. We'll see what happens. But there is no loan facility for even. And even they have for the four women, these women will not get loan because they can't give any quality. So government should come up with any subsidy or that kind of thing. Thank you. Two meters, the is the yeah, bike. Any other? So, is it like something that is transferred to the drivers that you understand or is it just work and then you do it? I mean, the cups that they drive. Cars. Uh -huh. Is this something that is transferred to them and over a certain point in time? Or it's, uh, it's something that they have to operate and maybe at a certain point in time, then they can um, own the cab? Yeah, many of drivers are, are owning cabs. Many of us are trained. You were talking about the ownership of the right. So, uh, are yeah, many of drivers of women trained by Azad are now <coughs> open their own cab services or cab like a travel agent company. The first driver, Sarno, I think in Delhi now she has three, four cabs and her daughters are also driving those cabs. So yeah, many of them have after doing a long job, they have saved money, they have started their own cab. Yeah, that's yeah, because we but it's not easy for them. Yeah, we so that's, that's always that's a different discussion. But also, we feel that enterprise is good. But for enterprise, women from very very vulnerable situation is not possible unless they get to a certain level to have that capital. Because there is a risk and there is a need of capital. The women with whom we are working would rather propose employment more because that's easy for them to have a dignified life. But many of them, after maybe five, ten years, or they've saved money and they start paying. Yeah. Question about the engaging and sensitizing like the men, and so we talk about the market. Like, what exactly do you all do? I mean, to sort of bring over the men and family and the community as well as the so which age group of men do you like focus? So we focus on the age group is the young, very young, 14 to 2022. 20, that's the age group. Uh, because that's easy to uh, change them and easy to get them because otherwise men 
I don't have any time to take up their own challenges. And also in later that people change then come back to their marriage. Um, and what we do exactly in the same communities as we do with the feminist leaders or the adolescent girls, first we identify them from the community where our drivers are coming, drivers are coming, or the trainees are coming for women with home problems, from their homes, from their neighborhood, and then we make group, we provide the again one year leadership training. So all these feminist leadership training have been designed in a way. And in those trainings, there are phases of the trainings where we talk with men and we discuss with men and we try to make them understand how toxic masculinity is not only creating problems for women, but teaching them to go more. And we, we introduce to the to them to the good, good masculinity rather than harmful masculinity. So that's how we engage with them in trainings. In many community activities and on the ground when they work. So, so we have an alumni network where feminist leaders are there, old advisors are there, these men are there who have been trained. So these alumni network together work. I'm just giving an example. There has been a violence case in the community who has been out driving. Very recently happens, and yesterday only that I put that. So now the men. Our main leader of the community is talking to the main of the family and going together. And the feminist leaders, main leader together going to home, intervening the situation, talking to the men. And many times it happens that men restrict the women to come to the training. So then our main leader go talk, try to convince, give them the different perspective, why women should go out and why you should also do some household chores. So that kind of engagement we have. But we train them for one year. Work like a men leaders or feminist men leader in the yes. uh, yes. uh, and for question. Actually, you have mentioned that you are always negotiated with the partner of organization to um, take the as a as an employee that in their organization. But I can see there are some also many drivers as a bus driver I saw and then this as a rickshaw driver I saw and in a cab driver also and the hero of the boxes also are uh, giving training to the kids and also the urban one of the government or even that they have their uh, drivers of uh, women uh, women uh, delivery girls I think maybe they have so uh, what kinds of challenges that you are facing with your partner organization and this which questions they have to ask you. So when you say partner, this partner are not CSO, this partner are business partner. Yes. Basically, as I said, it's all in even company, even company, many girls was other being involved here. So I mean that's a Sakha as a standard operating policy. Even when whenever Sakha goes to even anyone, any company, any individual, they have a framework. They first check that what these women need to work there. So the challenge is basically for this e-commerce industry. While I must say there has been an opportunity to open for women, but they they need a gender lens and the lens of intersectional gender lens rather. So from that perspective, still sometimes challenging that sometimes they don't know how to deal with women. Sometimes they are very much over patronizing women, who is also not a good thing, and they don't encourage. So we, we, we need to understand, negotiate them, that what women really need to be the employee of your company, of, of your setup. So, did your uh, uh, trainings have ever experienced any biases uh, environment in their being their employer? I mean, both, I would say. Many biases in not only in companies when they are in a four wheeler as on the road, they find that male drivers are uh, taunting them. Many people are looking at them like that. So that's they, uh, even in the in the big big uh, houses, these apartments, they are not allowed to use. Um, or should they go to have washroom for women um, employee and its drivers or else? So that kind of biases are always, it, it was always there. But I would also say that they get many supports. Many supports. I prefer, but I think we have a question to reply. So, when you go to the hospital, 
तो आप लोगों को कुछ ऐसे अब कुछ बायस का बायस का का ही नहीं मतलब ये भेदभाव ये कुछ भेदभाव फेस करते हैं कि नहीं और सपोर्ट भी क्या मिलता है कुछ कुछ भेदभाव आपका कुछ एक्सपीरियंस है जैसे हम गाड़ी चलाते हैं तो काफी लोग मतलब दूर दूर के भी देखते हैं कि लड़की गाड़ी चलाते हैं कोई कमेंट भी करता है कोई देख के कमेंट भी करता है कोई ओवर टाइम भी करता है तो उसको मैं खुद हैंडल करना पड़ता है तो उससे मुसीबतें होती है जो अपने आप को खुद हैंडल करते हैं कैसे मैं उनको जैसे कि वो ओवर टाइप करते हैं तो अपनी गाड़ी साइड में रोक के तो फिर मैं थोड़ा आगे ताकि ओवर टाइप करते हुए इसलिए ताकि मैं मेरी गाड़ी रोकू मगर मैं रोकती ही हूँ ओवर टाइप मैं भी करके फिर आगे ले जाती हूँ to uh, show power and to uh, and they want that they uh, they stop their car inside the car and then i ask them then what do you do and they said hum log we don't stop our car we also over it i went in as well you know but 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 that's weird i stopped like in the race right and then see the families so so family has is is a huge challenge so if you talk to any of our employees the mobilization level of mobilization workers or we we'll say the family has been always in the challenge however we have many programs we have this first when the trainees come join in azad we do have a family faculty meeting so in every quarter the family comes to office and our faculty and training team sit with the family and explain that how good the driver is doing or what is not yet been done but she will have to do and try to explain that it's a it's a she is creating a history you should support her and how you will be benefited also that kind of a dialogue happens in family faculty meetings we do have a report card we show it and see your daughter or your sister or your wife has done so much so many good things and all these things and but in, and your support is needed and all that thing other we have the engagement in community i mean if they come to office that's when the training starts but before and even giving training many times they they, they are absent they stuck at home family is not allowing them to come then all these leaders women feminist leaders men for gender justice leaders and our mobilization team as our mobilization teams go to family talk to them uh, meeting and there we have many systems like community meetings we have we have auto campaigns we have nukkanatak the theaters and the community so all those things together um, Theater and means so that family becomes convinced. However, of course, we get some families they are not convinced at all. So we have also a work out, face work out. They have to work out. Attrition is there, but they many times they come back. Also. And particularly after getting permanent license, they leave even. They have the the document. Whenever they want, they can join the work traffic. So they have the tool. So that itself having a permanent license, we call that's a that's a parameter or important indicator of employment. But also, I say that there are many supportive family too. I would not say that all or I many. I mean, there always are very mixed. Some families are like that. Sometimes you know, from very demanding when their wives get the permanent license because this they think that insecurity increases. They think that. Now, women. Now, my wife has this thing, which is 
it's more powerful than me and all those things comes. But here I want men to men they just take an important role. They try to engage with those men in particular environments. As you turn to the, the cases of domestic violence, so you have a couple of such things. Yeah, so in, in case of domestic violence, and then, as you said, that 83% of our trainees are survivor of violence, and I think more than 70% of them is survivor of domestic violence. It's probably because violence is very less in our. So, uh, yeah, in domestic violence, what do we do if the violence happens? Because though our feminist leaders are out there like a safety net in the community. So, whenever they get information on the women related to them, they take them to the primary police station, right in the fire. They are trained to do all those things. But for next parental support, legal support, or, and we do have a psychosocial support counselor comes in the office, or we send to them into counseling. We do have in every center that kind of a psychosocial support system. But for further support, like legal support, so we, we effort into other organizations who work on the Particularly in the violence cases, like in Delhi Jamui, yeah. in Kolkata Sayam, in Jaipur, there is another organization. So that's how we, we also do. We, as I do, a lot of collaboration and partnership with many different In that aspect, that aspect, do you find some difference across the states that we've been working with in the states? Like, do you like the uh, situation and how do you feel the difference is like? In Delhi, the women are more receptive, friends are more receptive, or vulgar like my kids, more the children that you find some difference with you to change your technique or uh, strategy of entry to the situation. I mean, I saw your question, that question, your <laughs> tenth question. <laughs> and so that's the only one question I was yesterday night. I was thinking that what would be the reply? Because mm -hmm. as I am exposed to all cities, so I honestly don't find, I mean, well, every city there I'm in a cultural context, that's mm -hmm. different. Uh, so, I mean, maybe in Delhi, the aggression is uh, more, I mean, in Kolkata, aggression is less, but other difficulties are there. So, I mean, but I think more or less in all cities, the, 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 our strategy is the same and the, because the background is the same, same kind of thing my women face. And Delhi is such a, like, Maori is the like, least safe city of India. So. Parents also have the those kind of fears like a lot of women the whole all the time, like what like, I found in my interviews with women. The parents feel that this kind of a job it means like woman is on the whole all the time. So, and then it will be like even uh, that uh, that's not from domestic fears, but you're saying public fears. Yeah, public. Yes. Right. Yeah, probably, I mean, so I mean, we are, I mean, we completely agree that they need and because data shows that when they are and all. But I uh, I don't know in our drivers uh, till now because we started from 2008 in Delhi. I mean there will be one two cases, but it's not a high rate of that kind of parking violence yet. Maybe they have all safety nets with them, so they have that buttons. Whenever they push that, so it comes to Sakasta and one agency or one security agency. So 24 hours in all cities. We will be there within, we mean, the agency or staff will be there within half. Also, as I said, that we then don't send them to random clients. That may be another. But nowadays, they take random. We don't send, but they take. No, no, we go, we go. So that kind of. So, yeah, but we, I agree that the, the data is like that in our experience in Delhi also. Women have managed the situation like this because they are trained to manage. So like they are working as bus drivers as well. You're starting your interviews now. Can we just finish our staff outside and then we'll give you the time? Great. So, one you, you mentioned that one of your goals and aims is to make women principal president. Right. So, what kind of social bias or barriers do you face? Because, uh, for, for example, uh, Mates who work at like and in, in different homes. Uh, what happens is gradually they work and the men choose not not to work, right? No. And the pressure and the like the sole responsibility comes from the women of, of that area of the house. So 
That's not our aim, by the way. But but that's what, no, that's not our aim, but that happens. Okay. So that's our experience. So that we don't design a program that, that women will be the sole responsibility. Rather, we also don't want that, that all responsibilities are women's shoulder. Right. Of course not. But in our experience, we see that 100%, 99% women of our setup, they are earning more. They are becoming the principal winner of the family because we, they are employed in a decent job. They have a good pay. And in their social economic situation, maybe their main partner have not have access even to that kind of decent job. That is also possible, which we haven't done any analysis yet. And but many times we found these men um, are violent, um, not not getting work regularly. They are in odd jobs. So when bring women from their families in decent jobs, so technically. The women are being the parents, but that's something we also we want that should be shared. Right, but the consequences may are not always in favor of right because the men may want to discourage, uh, exploit the earnings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that is always there. So one of our uh, uh, one of the main objective of our program is not only supporting women to access financial resources, but also having control over financial resources. So our training programs, within our training programs, this issue is uh, uh, interlinked or put in a way that women also have as their decision maker of the family. So they, of course, they support their family. Of course, they, as we, as you have shown, that intergenerational effect. They support their children, siblings, in education, health, family's health, parents' health, partners' health, everything. But they have the control over their money. That's the training we provide them. So, but yeah, sometimes also abusers there. We are not saying that right. it doesn't happen. It happens, and then they come to us. Then all our this change agents in the community. Engage with the family sometimes, even little things happen here. Yeah. So, I have to be able to. How many more questions? But, uh, so, yeah, sure. Yes, you can. If it's the last question, yeah. you can go. If you have two more, <laughs> let's shift. So, have you been able to calculate yeah. or arrive at a figure of, it, of economic impact of what us are applicable right now? We because have 94 of in unorganized sector, they are women. So the shift or from unorganized to organized. Uh, we have this as we as I've shown that uh, the cumulative wealth accumulation that data we have. We did a uh, return on investment study a couple of years ago before COVID. So that data we have. Um, yeah, that data we have. Any other data that we don't have right now? Yeah. I just have a short question. Coming from Chennai, uh, there is this uh, general grace for the STEM courses among the students of, of my generation. But women are not getting supported uh, more for the STEM courses rather than the men in the, in the same families. So, do you have options like where women can work as part time drivers in uh, your uh, initiative and also fund their own studies in courses which are not? Having lots of family backup, like a like STEM courses. I'm also an engineer, so the gender parity was very low when I was pursuing my engineering. Do you have such? Yeah. Options? So not only in Chennai, actually the data shows six percent are in STEM course right now in India. So all over India, in STEM or in non-traditional, the situation is very clear. Yes, many of our drivers, even one one of our drivers, have completed MSW after doing the job. So we encourage. So we have a that you have seen in the you have seen the film. We have a we call it Badlaoka Safari uh, monitoring tool to uh, capture the journey of employment, and that has been done by themselves. So that we don't do other staff don't. So we have sessions where they come and they put themselves where they are. There is a path. So we have seen briefly that uh, you have seen the photo of that. So in that, there is one parameter that started study again. 
So many of them, part-time, full-time, however it is, are doing this um, job and also um, continuing study. A couple of them are there. One of our fa women faculty, who she has passed in Mr. Blyges, or based on something like that, yeah. So that kind of, yeah, of course, we yeah. always encourage women to do education. Personally, of people. After being a we don't have any percentage yet because that's not many of them because they get the job. The, the educational qualification comes to us as from class 8 to class 12. Maximum is 8 to 10. So it's their life and their aspiration has also changed. So they maybe they don't want to also continue at all. But if they want, we always encourage and we encourage, we support it to three women like that. Uh, just on the quick question, I think it's just a urban initiative, it's just only cities. Did you try to think about doing it in the rural side of the country? Did you do it? Uh, try rural Yeah. Oh, no, not really. I mean, we do have an Indian network. We have partners who work in rural areas. Um, but in our case, cities is business of the lab and this writing. Is city best. They will not get job in the rural area. So therefore, our thing is focused on mainly in the cities. But there are partners in of us in Nature who train plumbers, who train machines. Mm -hmm. So they are in the they, many of them work in the electricians. Do you know what portion of your drivers have personal bank accounts? 100%. 100% because that's a financial literacy, something we train them. And also, when they uh, they enroll, even they don't have a bank account, that's another job of all famous leaders to get them bank account. Personal, not family, right? Personal, personal. But yeah, sometimes they make it with uh, in the joint name and all, that's their choice. But yeah, their name should be there. Because when they get job, their salary is transferred in bank. That's what criteria we, we don't take that trained unless they have a bank. Mm -hmm. sure. okay, uh, in platform ecology or gain economy, there should depend uh, uh, on uh, social safety. And uh, basically, they pull over these drivers. Basically, uh, they don't have any social security because, uh, as per the definition of labor, they are not uh, promising. Uh, so, uh, what type of social security is provided by South Foundation for the basically in case of accident and other things? Yeah, for Sakha drivers, too, they have accident policy. They, even then, before Sakha, they become Sakha drivers, when they start driving the training, well, Azad gives them that accident policy. Anyway, so, they have policies, they have the uh, health, health uh, medical aid and all those. But when they join the economy, that's also a, I mean, that's also a, our criticism to the economy. Yeah. So that's a, our advocacy point of the, this industry, uh, these industries to ensure that they have that. Not yet done, but Sakha supports them. Whenever they join Sakha as drivers, Sakha do have all those things. To be, uh, I have a question to join sure. in, yeah. So you've been a trailblazer in this, and you've been on this journey for all the 20, nearly 20 years, right, on this. What do you think is needed to, I guess, you know, until the day you see that um, women drivers are mainstream? How long will it take? I don't know. Moving forward, what, what's kind of your, what, what do you think? We think the scaling of this program mm -hmm. is important. And it's not by us, but, yeah. but by mainstream, mainstream players. Like we have a plan, um, just we are trying to start with the DSU, just in their curriculum, the ITIs is India, the, the technical training institutes in India. They should include this DSU framework in their curriculum and the gender studies in their curriculum. So we are in, in the conversation with DSU in, in an organization, in an university in Jaipur and all. So that is one, the skill education institution needs to take this up. 
And the second is the initiative from government. It's good that they have introduced this native and nutritional non-monotrition method, but it's not just about introducing it better on the ground. So and again, again, and we, we, we all say many times that just say providing technical training doesn't help. Right. In West Bengal government, given permanent license and the technical training to many, many, many one we, we started going to open the slums. We saw many women in permanent license, but they can't drive. They don't have confidence to drive. Right. So that is for the scale. So one needs to change and introduce the scaling up by skill education institutions, by governments, and importantly by corporates. They have to have that social security system to. Um, absorb women as a prime as the question. Yes, thank you very much. So I'll let uh, we'll continue until we do have to introduce you, but I'd like to really thank you and you really for um, well the wonderful work you're doing, very you know brave and uh, I'm sure we're opening her the tip of the iceberg of the challenges you faced and all the efforts you made, but it's really impressive. And thanks for taking the time to come here to share that with us. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it. I mean, I mean, we have been part of many escape initiatives. Right. I mean, uh, not not in a structured way, but as and when I think you know. So as being part of ESCA, uh in terms of the partnership, in terms of joining these, or taking this nutritional value for women for the your forum, what, what, how we can do that? Yeah, good question. Well, that's why we're actually commissioning these studies to figure out. We have about how many countries in this uh, multi three countries, so we are regional, so we don't work in just one country, right? We're trying to find some, you know, um, common interest countries and trying to find ways in which you know we could help at this sub uh, regional region. Right? How to stimulate a risk knowledge exchange or something that would be, you know, useful to, yeah, scale up, right? I mean, and so, you know, I'm hoping that these studies coming from each country would also inform us what would be useful. So in that, you know, when you interview, please also share, share with us as well, what would be useful from your perspective? Because, you know, I mean, well, I think my colleagues can also explain how we work, but, um, you know, there are these member states, regional frameworks, they agree, and you talked about it. There are policies, there are, you know, international conventions, there are, you know, even regional frameworks that say, you know, gender equality, inclusion, you know, decent work, all of that is on paper usually, right? And the extent to which that is implemented is often where the problem is, where the rubber hits the road, literally, right? So um, we're trying to see how we can help. So, you know, partnering with you, absolutely. How, this is the question for us as well. So we continue our, you know, um, conversation, see how we can be useful too in the, you know, capacities that we have. We have the UN agencies, obviously, on the ground. They, the UN women, for instance, yes. I'm sure you'll be working much yes. closer. And right? they have, you know, capacities and resources on this, you know, mandate of gender equality, so they can do far more. But working together, you know, there may be some other new things that we can also. So we continue. But thank you. Please, um, thanks yeah. people for providing us some opportunity to. No, no, no. It's, it's the honor Thank you. Come on, You can continue, please. Yeah. Thank you much, Miss. No questions. So, would you like to the answer to the foundation of the association? Also, foundation. Yes, sir. Are you right? Uh, so, the founder's name is Nimo Vadira, and there are two more women who have founded this. The original, so all of them, the founders were part of the, uh, they were feminist, mm -hmm. and they are part of the women's movement for a long time. And they, the idea was to change the gender division of labor. And also the people who joined at leadership level, at least, like us, uh, we, we, we have been feminist even before joining Azar. So the idea is we are changing the gender division of labor in the labor market and providing women to save job with livelihood. And of course, when you say the gender, changing the gender division in market and labor, it means you have to introduce something, some proficiency which you speak traditionally. 
not applicable to it. So that's how the idea came up. So, and, and I, I would say that, I mean, in some space, but what I know as being a very dynamically, that it was like, like many of us, the feminists, do have this uh, thought always that why women are only in the traditional job. So I think that triggered. Ask the question. I don't know if uh, other people have the same sort of. I, I, so, what type of uh, reasons or justifications would you give the men, the, the family, or the communities, or the mother in law? Just now you had something on mother in laws. So, what reasons can you give them to say yes to using you know, the wife or the daughter in law for the training programs and, and for the work? Because I, I'm just thinking, right, if I'm the mother-in-law and I'm the husband, you know, someone's cooking for me doing my housework, then now suddenly I have to learn how to do that. Why would I want, I would say no, if I were in a privileged situation like that. One, as she said, one is money is very important, remuneration. So, and this is just not a training. So that's a training. And then after that, we, ensure, we offer job if the woman takes it. So one is the, of course, uh, uh, a dissent amount of remuneration is coming to your home, which will change your home's social economic condition. Number two, also, not always the money. I am not saying that money always matters because also many families are there, they're very poor, but they don't allow women to do even we offer them a 10,000 rupees or 12,000 rupees per month job. But also we engage with them in a way to convince them that this is, a, this is something good. So what we felt that people, all of us have this thing to, to uh, within us, to do something good, to do something uh, for for new and which is which is which is good for family society. So that's how we, we start from that and we use this word in your supporting to create a history. That also, I mean, if someone says me that you, you leave your daughter for this course and we will create a history in India, of course I will I'll be proud for her. So we don't start from a distress. We start from that you and we believe that that every person has inside a uh, you know in a good will or something. So we try to strive on that. That all we try to. Yeah. And also we show them other women. Like they go uh, with us in the camp at some time. So they see the uh, the neighbor, maybe the nana was neighbor of a family. And we are going there, and we, we see that what change Diana has now, and Diana's family has now. So that also we show, showcasing the that's. Very much I just guess we have the family that just yeah, they don't do child child care, they don't cook, they don't do that. So they don't do that. But they just say, "Ah, but ah, but ah, but so they grab." Shut up, they grab. Ah, do they give it change? Ah, they grab. so she, I asked, but uh, did you have any uh, challenges in your family? And she said that my father was a little bit that kind, but if I had this, uh, I, I wanted to do that, so I convinced mother as then. Now both of them have.
we don't face like that. I mean, after even they are unmarried join. So better rather to join unmarried, they get that perspective that what kind of partner is can be real supporting and what is the real love is. So actually it becomes better when after the training and after doing job, they look for a partner and they have that clear perspective. To in, in, I mean, I don't want this man. So, so actually it helps them. So they have the have so you know. Yeah, is, and, and they get better partners for them. They get supportive partners for them because they know who to choose. About mentioning this, uh, but probably just go back to other areas. For example, right now it's mostly limited to cats and chokers, right? But uh, you also talked about um, sending these stream women into the BGC buses and stuff like that. So, have you tried how successful has that been? And have you also tried um, sending these trained women into, for example, school buses? Because I think schools will be more supportive for these women than the DTC bus system, in my opinion. So have you tried? Already, already in Delhi public school, our, driver, our drivers are driving their school buses. Mm -hmm. We are already into it. And we don't provide heavy lady trainings because we don't have that infrastructure. But we provide all these trainings and as I said that now in DTC, the 50 women are under process of joining DTC and within that 35, I guess, from trained by Azad. So, yeah. There's something Not yet. Any more questions? ਕੋਈ <laughs> Because the main thing is to explain here the awareness, and we are the uh, main role, uh, role model. As a role model, they can both so that they can spare this talent. So that's and thank you so much. <laughs> so she asked her that uh, have you said that uh, seeing you, your sister is coming. She said that yes. Many of my friends have already joined. Four or five friends have joined in Azad after seeing me. But we have many that kind of experience in even the mother daughter. So yeah, yeah, we have mother daughter in Delhi. We have mother daughter in Kolkata, uh, in Jaipur also. Sisters, we do have many, and mother daughter cousins. So as I said, that how we convince family best is showcasing the woman from her right, for their neighborhood who is doing this, and how things have changed in the woman's life and family's life. So we have many supportive mothers. We have many supportive mothers in Slavari Club too. Very close too. And as feminists, we see the whole issue of mother in law and daughter in law as a man. We know that it's about power. It's about power and mother-in-law has been a victim for a long time. So like a factory, when the manager, when the labor become manager, the new labor joins. So manager overpower on him. So actual powerful is the patriarch in the family. So and many times that's not mother-in-law. Mother-in-law takes the jewelry, but jewelry stays with the patriarchs the Sindhu book of the Amazonians, the the locker, something like that. And access to that locker and the bank account is in the unfortunate parents' trust, <laughs> our husband's hand. So we don't see honestly mother in law as parent. Mother in and we train also of the women, and we have experienced many mother in law have changed also. Many mother in law became supportive. Even even we have cases. My mother in law went against son to protect son. Yeah, 
that sort. But I agree that there are common thing, I mean, experience. But here as a feminist, I always say that we give this metaphor or what, this example of mother in law in We don't know what will happen to the son in law and father in law because they never stay together. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we have to see. And then women versus women, the narrative uh, needs to be changed. So because, yeah. No, actually, I don't know from my side. So I'm originally from Iran, I'm Iranian Canadian. And one of the funny things when my mom got married uh, to my father, she was always telling me that the main advice, the most important advice that my grandmother, uh, so her mother in law gave her was find a job as soon as possible because you want to make sure you have your financial uh, independence and you're not in this marriage because you're in you know, a condition on like, your husband. You want to make sure you're in this marriage because you want to be here. And she actually supported her to find her yes, first really job good. and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we do have many that kind of examples. I want to put a support system which you provide, like if a married woman rushes into patient business, she wants to come out of that, but she has a children as well to take care of. So, do you provide some kind of support system for children in not in just terms of daycare, but in terms of education, in terms of? Because that also becomes a responsibility and a constraint for the government to come out and drive and be out of the house for the whole day of the night. So we provide them financial services. So many of our women who became driver and wanted to come out from the marriage with children. So we provide that support and where they can go and get a good hostel. Even if there are free, many other NGOs run that kind of children homes or good educational institutions that refer the connections we make. Uh, and since they earn, they start earning. So that financial support they don't need also. They don't want also. They want the, the right place to send their children. That right place, information and connection, and that we all make our staff of and leaders. And then find a place and then connect me and then from fill up and then all those things happen. Right? That you just go and you can send now. I mean, you need to be with that person, woman. So that process will be in. If there are no further questions, then we'd like to thank her for the she comes of the Azad Foundation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Azad Foundation. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. And of course, you will definitely be in touch with us. This portfolio is true. And we can step on gender transfer. So, can we wonder if there's a need for separate interviews? As I say, I said there is a question, so you can write to us directly. Copy Shika. Shika will organize this training seminar. Then, of course, you can, the you can come to our daily office and meet him and have this HGD and this interview, whatever. So that before that, that what you want to exactly know, so that we can select also people who have uh, women who can be served alone. To send a note to us with the request, we can still do for the For the other leadership, the questions are and then your answers. Yeah, it's okay. okay. So, all now, of course, all is people. I was telling Chica when I was coming, I don't think that we need a separate interview because everything is in the PPT. Um, yeah, yeah. But we really yeah. like to thank you as well because uh, the first time I saw him in the reception, I was driving with the officers. I think we really benefited as well. Thank you so much. I think thanks to you all and thanks to Escape Team and Escape of Thinking These. And we are really looking forward to this study because women in transport is something whole area of our work. So we'd like to be supported in any way to partner with you in any in any area, whatever you want. So we can get talk later or if you can send mail. And all we can think, we can think also together that what are the things also we would like to suggest or we want to learn from you guys.
We're looking forward to the study. This is a high input. And also our policy brief on the DTC. I think we should share it. The, the, our policy brief from uh, the Google. The, there has been a study in, in the policy brief. Yes, 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 yes.